Hi friends, it's Monica to talk about my most anticipated books for the year 2024. The books in this video are in release date order and let's just start off right in January. First up is a book that has already been released and this was released on January 16th and at the time of filming this video it's already out and the book I'm talking about is Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Worlds by Heather Fawcett. This is a cozy fantasy with a very scholarly protagonist in a violent fae. This book is the sequel to Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, where we first meet Emily Wilde who is a professor on a research expedition to a remote village in order to find elusive fae for her encyclopedia. And at the end of the first book, she successfully finds these fae and she's written her encyclopedia. And now in book two, fairies are now appearing randomly at her university and she wants to get to the bottom of this. So Emily must uncover these fae's secrets before it's too late. There's also Wendell Bambley who is a rival academic Emily's and they did have a sort of partnership in book one and we still will see that continue now in this book. That's all I'm going to be saying about this book because there's spoilers so pick up the first one if you have not yet read it. But one thing I did really love about the first book was the format of it and it was um, originally in the format of journal entries by Emily and I really do hope that this sequel follows that same formatting. And for sure I will be picking this one up on my TBR. Then we have House of Shadow of Flame by Sarah J Maas releasing on January 30th. So if you are in the sphere of the romanticy genre or book talk, you already know that this book is releasing soon. House of Flame and Shadow is going to be book 3 in the Crescent City series and this is an adult urban fantasy. And for those who don't really know much about this series, we are following half fae, half human Bryce Quinlan. And she is in an urban fantastical city that's being populated by humans, angels, fae, merfolk, shifters, werewolves, and a whole other bunch of creatures. Bryce is enjoying her 20s and that type of lifestyle until tragedy strikes. And she is pulled into working to solve a crime that she does not want to be involved in. And she must work with the angel Hunt Athelar who is also her bodyguard. So in this series we have a mix of urban fantasy, romance, and mystery. And with all those elements together I really had a fun time reading the series. And I did a massive reread of the Crescent City series and these are giant books. They're like 800 pages long and I'm very excited to see where this third book will take us. I have no idea what will happen next but no spoilers for those who have not read any books by Sarah J Maas. Then moving on to February and this release date has a lot of books that I want to read on February 6th. The first one I want to pick up is a paranormal fantasy romance and this is Bride by Ali Hazelwood. Ali Hazelwood is better known for her STEM romance novels such as The Love Hypothesis and Love is on the Brain which both of those I really enjoyed. But this one is a little bit different because it is a romance between a vampire and a werewolf. Misery Lark is the daughter of a vampire councilman and she is an outcast. But now Misery is called to broker a peace alliance between the vampires and their mortal enemies, the werewolves. But the only route that Misery can find to make this peace alliance is to marry their alpha, who is Low Moreland. And both of them have their own reasons to agree to this marriage of convenience. Well, for this one, I'm very interested to see how Ali Hazelwood will take this spin on a paranormal romance. And I'm predicting that there will be some rivals to lovers trope, but let's see how this one is like. Also releasing on February 6th is The Woman by Kristen Hanna. This is a historical fiction book about the Vietnam War. This one is a coming of age story and it looks at the effects of war as well as when veterans return to their home country and the treatment that veterans have towards them. We follow 20 year old nursing student Frankie who comes from a very idyllic place in Southern California 
1965, her brother goes to serve in the Vietnam War and she also enlists into the Nurse Army Corps. She quickly finds out that war is inglorious, it's ugly, it's chaotic, but then there are some small moments of hope. Once the war is over, Frankie goes back to America and she finds out that her country is completely divided and very angry. I'm so so intrigued by this book. It's going to be very heartbreaking and it's also going to introduce some ways of how I would view women in a new light that I hadn't considered before. I will definitely look to pick this one up when it releases. Another release on February 6th is The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. This one is described as a fantasy mystery thriller. I haven't read anything by this author before, but I was drawn in because of that cover. A brief description is that there is a mysterious death of a high imperial officer that happens, and really the next thing you know is that there is a trace spontaneously erupting from his body, which is very unusual. Enter an eccentric investigator, Anna, and her new assistant, Din, who has an impeccable memory. This one is also described as having a Holmes and Watson detective pairing, which I am absolutely came for. And now I'm finding out that I'm really enjoying a mystery being solved in a fantasy type of setting. So I'm very interested to see how I would like this one. Then jumping to April 2nd, we have Just for the Summer by Abby Hibnes. I've really been loving her books and this one really does sound very sweet and lighthearted. Justin has a curse and once his post on Reddit goes viral, every woman wants to date him. But the reason is, is because once Justin and whoever he's dating breaks up, that ex-partner then goes on to find their soulmate with whatever person they are with next. But a woman is also cursed with the same problem he has. Emma DMs Justin and they work out a plan together. They are going to date and hopefully that will cancel out both of their curses. Is this going to work? No. <laughs> This was only supposed to be a summer fling, but life gets in the way and feelings are getting caught. So Emma and Justin, they have to navigate a whole lot of more than they first expected. And maybe fate will get it right this time. This definitely seems like a perfect summer beach read. Another book that is releasing in April is The Familiar by Lee Verdugo. This one is releasing on April 9th. This is a highly anticipated historical fantasy set in the Spanish Golden Age. I wasn't really expecting this from Lee Verdugo, but I do like her books, so I'm excited for this one. So this one we are following Luisa, who is working as a scullion maid in Madrid. Luisa also has a gift of performing little miracles and her mistress catches wind of this and wants Louisa to use her magic to increase her family's standing in society. But all this exposure to the nobility catches the eye of the disgraced secretary to the king of Spain, Antonio Perez. Spain is also at war with England and Perez will use any chance to regain the king's favor, including using Louisa. Louisa is thrust into the world of seers, holy men, and alchemists, and she really has to use all her willpower and her wits to survive. And I'm really excited to see how I like this one, and I really don't know much about the Spanish Golden Age, so I'm excited to learn a little bit more about that when I read this one. Then on August 29th, we have The Life Impossible by Matt Haig. There isn't much info being released on this one just yet, but I really did like Matt Haig's other book, The Midnight Library, that was very thought-provoking. This is the info that we have about The Life Impossible so far. A Life Impossible is a story of wild adventure, deep transformation, and gloriously heartwarming characters. It shows how a new outlook can burst into life at any moment and change everything. This is definitely a type of book that I want to pick up when it is released. Going to September 10th, we have A Witch's Guide to Magical Innkeeping by Sang Yu Mandana. I absolutely love the cozy fantasy that I read in December by the same author, which was The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, and that one was just a delight to read. And this new upcoming book is also a witchy fantasy romance, and I bet it's going to be so so cozy as well. In this one, we're following Sarah Swan and she used to be one of the most powerful witches in Britain. Until that is after she resurrected her great aunt. 
and she lost the majority of her power. Now, Sarah is almost completely magicless. She has a new friend in the form of a talking fox. She's also exiled from her guild and also running an inn with her newly resurrected great aunt, Jasmine. But once Sarah learns that there is an old spell book that may have the secret to restore her magical abilities, she interacts with the icy historian, Luke Larson, and they might have a past history of a one night stand, but that doesn't really matter, does it? I really can't wait for a new cozy fantasy read, and this one is releasing just in September, which is perfect for the fall season. I'm really looking forward to a sweet romance in found family tropes all over again. And last, but definitely not least, is Wind and Truth by Brennan Sanderson. This is book five in the Stormlight Archive series. This one is releasing December 6th. This is also the last book to conclude the first arc of the Stormlight Archive, and I just know it's going to be insane. <laughs> this series is a high fantasy, there are epic battles, there are amazing character journeys. I recently reread the first two books which are The Way of Kings and Words of Radiance. They're both amazing. And then I also then picked up book three and four which are Oathbringer and The Rhythm of War. So I am all prepped and ready for book five. I'm prepared for whatever might happen and even with the little blurb on Goodreads and all the little hints that Brandon Sanderson is dropping, I cannot be any more excited for this book. I am expecting great revelations and maybe a few deaths here and there which is going to be heartbreaking. Anyways, I really cannot wait to read this one too. And those are all the books that I am highly anticipating so far for 2024 until we get more release dates and more book announcements. I'm going to be happy with th this current list and to see if I do really enjoy them or not. But I have high hopes for every single one of these books on this list and I hope you really enjoyed watching this video and maybe added a book or two to your own TBR. Comment down below what is a book that you are really anticipating to read this year. And don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below, and also ring the bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!